Hi guys, it's me, Chazer HD. Now, of course, my race watch along that was, you know, flying along, 2,000 viewers, 2,100 viewers, we're going to get 2.5k for sure watching live. Flying along, great race. And then we get a copyright strike from the same company who did it for Baku. Now, I have been in contact with the company. The strike, by the way, has been removed. So my live streaming ability is now back. But my next live stream won't be until probably next Saturday for the podcast. The reason I have been striked after contact with the company is apparently, I cannot confirm this right now, but apparently it's because of links to the actual race on, you know, illegal sites in the chat. If this is true, then I now have a dilemma because either there are two things I can do. One, try and find a setting, and I think there is in the, the channel settings, to stop links being posted, or I will have to, to keep the stream actually up, disable the live chat. Let me know though, guys, what would you want? Would you want me, if I can, find that setting to just remove the ability to post links or do you think that if i you know if it means the stream doesn't get struck down would you rather me disable the live chat and then instead just read your guys's comments from the discord server at the same time let me know what you want and i'll you know take your comments and i'll have a think about it but if that is the case guys then it isn't my fault it isn't necessarily the company's fault, even though I don't think the strike again was was right. I can see what their point is, because if, you know, if, if we have people in the chat, you know, spamming links to the actual live race, I can see why they would give me a strike. So, again, I do have... A bit of a dilemma so let me know guys in the comments what do you want me to do do you want me to try and find a way to get rid of links being posted in the chat or would you rather for the stream to be able to be up have the chat completely disabled i if i can i will make sure to not have the uh to have the chat disabled if i can just disable links i will do that and the chat will you know remain as it is but if i have to I may have to disable the live chat and try and work around it. But good news, the race watch along is back up. Yes, I know it cuts off halfway through, but guys, come on, what can we do about it? We were cut off when we were right in the midst of things. And yeah, there was nothing we could do. So make sure, if you are new, to subscribe because we do that every race weekend. We're so good at it. I don't think anyone can deny it. Me and Niv are great at watch alongs. And we do it every race weekend, so don't forget to subscribe for that. Uh, bottom right of the screen, or go to my homepage, subscribe. And also, on that video and on this video, smash the hell out of that like button. Because the last hour or so for me has been quite emotional, to be honest. Because I've been very, very angry. And even contemplated giving up. Because days like this... When you're, you know, having such a great day and it's took away from you so quickly, it makes you contemplate things like that. So, it, you know, your support is appreciated. If you can, you know, again, smash a like button, comment down below your, uh, what you think and your support, then go ahead and do so. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you want to do about the chat. But uh, yeah, that's a shame that that happened. Thankfully, the strike is gone. And now, let's get into this review of the race. And it was, by the way, a great race. It was probably the best Hungarian Grand Prix since 2015. And it was maybe not a classic, but definitely a race you would go and watch back. It was a very, very good Grand Prix. And let's get into the results of said Grand Prix. So... Lewis Hamilton brilliantly winning after a second pit stop, caught Verstappen, passed Verstappen, who finished in P2. P3, Sebastian Vettel, who passed Charles Leclerc late on for that position, who finished in P4. By the way, Ferrari a minute behind. That is not good to be that far behind, especially after making only one pit stop. P5, Sainz, then Gasly, Raikkonen, Bottas, of course, eighth because he had that 
the front lockups on the first lap and then the front wing damage because of Charles Leclerc and I think slightly Lewis Hamilton. Norris in ninth, Albon, great point in P10. And then finishing the race, but not in the points, Perez, Hulkenberg, Magnussen, Ricardo, Kvyat, Russell, Stroll, Giovinazzi, and Kubica. And retiring from the race, Roman Grosjean. So now, let's get into the teams. First off, Mercedes. And I have to say, for their driver, Lewis Hamilton, he showed why once again, even though, yes, he did gain a lot from being on fresher tyres at times and being on softer tyres when he pitted for the mediums, for me, Lewis, again, showed why he is still, for me, the best on the grid and why he is, at times, so, so unstoppable and why, you know, he's, again, such a great driver. He was so good today. He was, just for Max Verstappen, an unstoppable force, and so was that team. So at the start, of course, Lewis Hamilton got to P2. He was around two seconds for a long time behind Max Verstappen. Then he closed the gap. Uh, before the pit stops, Verstappen pitted. Verstappen then gained a load of time, but Hamilton came out with fresher tyres, caught him, uh, almost got past him. It was a great battle. Then Hamilton dropped behind, pitted for mediums, caught him, passed him, won the race. Great drive from Lewis Hamilton. And my driver of the day is Lewis Hamilton. Great drive by him, and he and the team can be very proud. But Valtteri Bottas had an awful race. Locking up so many times on the first lap. Getting damage on his front wing, which I don't think necessarily was his fault. But he dropped back to P5. Then pitted and put the hard uh, hard compound tyres on. And eventually finished in P8. If he is being judged on Hockenheim and Hungary for his seat. Then he might just have lost it. But I think Valtteri does deserve to keep his seat. Because I think for the majority of the season, he has been good. So... I don't think Valtteri should lose his seat, but there you go. And another win for Mercedes. And yeah, great drive from Lewis Hamilton once again. Next up, Ferrari. P3 and P4. In terms of position, great result. Pace, though, absolutely terrible. Over a minute behind Lewis Hamilton at the end of the Grand Prix. And Hamilton pitted for an extra time. That is really, really bad. Hamilton, if Hamilton stayed out, who knows? The Ferraris might have, uh, might have lapped him. Oh, no, the Ferraris might have got lapped by Lewis Hamilton if Hamilton got past Verstappen earlier. The Ferraris' race pace was so, so bad. But again, position-wise, um, good result. Ferrari, I think, in qualifying definitely did close the gap. But again, in the race, they absolutely did not. But uh, when it comes to the drivers, Charles Leclerc, great start. Was lucky not to get a puncture with his weird move on Valtteri Bottas at the start. And then for the majority of the race, Leclerc was ahead of Vettel. Vettel pitted for soft tyres at his only pit stop. Leclerc went onto hard tyres. And eventually, Sebastian caught and passed Leclerc with about two and a half laps to go. Um, a shame for Leclerc because... Because Ferrari was so far behind, they were basically racing against themselves. So weird that they felt the need to race them against each other and risk that. But there you go. Third and fourth, at least they got the result. And Ferrari, I think results-wise, will be happy with this result. And going to Spa and Monza, I think Ferrari will definitely be strong for the race victory uh, in those races. Next up, Red Bull Racing. Max Verstappen. Wasn't the best driver today, but drove very, very, very well. Start the race, great. Uh, the first stint, I thought he was very good. Yes, Hamilton closed in, but Max was losing a bit of grip on the tyres, I think. He did well to undercut Hamilton in terms of time and pull away from Hamilton. But then Lewis caught him very quickly, tried to pass, but Max's defence was so, so strong and he did very well. To keep him behind. Then Lewis pitted. And Max thought he had done enough. To get the win. But Lewis caught him. And passed him. And there was nothing Max could do. Max's hard tyres were dead. Then he pitted for soft tyres I believe. And did the fastest lap. So he gets the fastest lap point. So shame for Red Bull. Great weekend. But they just couldn't stop Lewis Hamilton today. It is that simple. Pierre Gasly though. P6. A lap down. Let's be honest, he was basically a lap down on Max Verstappen. And I think literally he was a lap down on Max Verstappen. 
gets beat by Carlos Sainz. And again, Pierre Gasly, not good enough for a Red Bull seat. How anyone out there can look at Pierre Gasly and say, yeah, Pierre Gasly, he's good enough for Red Bull. How is he? He's getting lapped by his teammate and can't even beat a McLaren in a Red Bull. It, I'm sorry, it's terrible. Gasly is terrible. And the quicker Red Bull cut their losses, the better they'll be. So hopefully they do that pretty soon. But for Red Bull, in today's race, they scored, what, 27 points today? And Ferrari got 20 three or 20 i think no 27 so i think red bull points wise even though they'll be disappointed not to win it was still a good amount of points for the team next up and now let's get into the midfield renault uh renault they were on a good strategy for the first half of the race but they didn't have the pace when it mattered to get into the points hulkenberg and ricardo i think drove well but again the car just front to rear is not good enough it's not a good enough racing car to be in the being the points with the McLarens, the Alpha of Kimi Raikkonen, it's not a good enough car, I'm afraid. And uh, Ricardo, I think, drove very well today. Got very racy with other cars out there, such as you know Magnussen and uh, Bottas and other drivers. So good, entertaining race from Daniel, but that car just isn't quick enough. And for Hulkenberg, yeah, also, car isn't quick enough. Renault are in deep, deep trouble because Toro Rosso, who are P5 in the constructors, after that great result at Hockenheim, finished in the points. So they're losing ground to Toro Rosso. I didn't even think I'd be saying that for this season, but there you go. Uh, next up, McLaren. Even though they didn't finish uh, at the front of the midfield when they probably should have, I think a good result for McLaren because Carlos Sainz finished P5. Great result. And again, Carlos Sainz showing why he has been the best midfield driver of 2019. And for me, one of the top six drivers on the grid for this season. He's been great. Lando Norris, shame for him. He had a slow pit stop and got jumped by Raikkonen, Gasly, and eventually uh, Valtteri Bottas got passed as well. So shame for him. But for McLaren, that is... 12 points in the constructors and that's basically confirmation of p4 in the constructors for 2019 great race by mclaren and they can be very happy with that result next up alfa romeo kimi raikkonen again great drive p7 i believe in the grand prix great start i think honestly he would have beat lando norris today in this race even if norris didn't have the slow pit stop so i think kimi raikkonen was again very good today it was a shame he was uh jumped by pierre gasly because i think he probably could have beat him if he did uh not get jumped in the pit stop phase but p7 great result for him and alpha are now back in contention with other teams such as you know renault and haas and teams like that even Atsi, though terrible um to finish that far back behind your teammate is unacceptable. And he's basically gone back to how he was at the start of the season. So Giovinazzi has got to get his act together. But for Alpha, yeah, good day. Good day. Six points. And hopefully they continue that into Spa and Monza, where I think Kimi uh, will definitely be good. And so will Alpha. Next up, Haas. Haas's race pace wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, but still, ultimately, at the end of the day, it's not quite good enough to get in the points. They just don't have enough as of yet, but it was at times not too bad. So I think Haas, they are making progress. They are definitely going more so now in the right direction compared to earlier races such as you know Silverstone and France and Austria so good to see that Haas are going in the right direction and hopefully at Spa and Monza that can continue as well great result though for Toro Rosso Alexander Alban getting the final point in P10 great result and that is exactly what Toro Rosso needed, of course, for the constructors because I believe they are now uh, maintaining that top five in the constructors. 
and Toro Rosso, you know, they're looking very good right now. Uh, the, the race was quite an entertaining one. Uh, Albon had to absolutely work to get that point. I think he passed Perez for it. Uh, I will admit I wasn't concentrating because I was dealing with the whole copyright thing, but his uh, wheel-to-wheel battle with Kvyat was, was great. It was so, so good. Great to see those two competing that hard. But yeah, Albon, he had to work for it, and he did work for it, and he deservedly got a point. A great for Toro Rosso. And going into the summer break... I think they're looking pretty good for a top six uh, constructors finish, possibly. So good for them. Next up, racing point. Sergio Perez today was very, very good. Uh, mostly because of him being a better driver than his teammate. But also, his great start was really a big helping hand for him. Because he went from P, I think, 16 to P12 at the start. So great start for him. Exactly what he needed. And I think Sergio Perez can be even though he didn't finish in the points given how bad qualifying was i think he can be happy or at least you know satisfied with how things went stroll awful race awful weekend the guy is terrible at this circuit simply uh but yeah pointless for racing point and finally is williams and George Russell, even though he didn't uh, maintain P13, which is where he was at one point, ahead of Magnussen and Ricardo and Bottas, the finish where he did, which I believe is P16, ahead of Stroll and Giovinazzi, that is a great result. And he can be very proud of this weekend. Very proud, and so can the team. Robert Kubica, of course, at the back, but... For Russell, great result, great day, and great weekend for him. But guys, that is it for the race review. It's been a very stressful day, of course, for me. Uh, I will be back tomorrow for my incident analysis video at 12 p.m. UK time, where we'll look at Hamilton versus Verstappen and Vettel versus Leclerc. Maybe some Daniel Ricciardo stuff as well. So make sure to come along to that. But thank you guys for the support. Uh, it's been a very hard day, of course. We've had... A lot of good viewership and new subs took away from us. But I can guarantee you, like I've done for basically my entire life, I will work my backside off to get this channel uh, going in a very successful uh, manner. So thank you guys very, very much. And uh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow for the incident analysis for the Hungarian Grand Prix. But guys, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.